cards and pass them along the views. It is always good to see you in worship. It is especially good after several Sundays of not sure what the weather would hold and whether or not we would be able to have services, to have a Sunday where if people are here, it's not because of snow. So welcome to each of you, especially those we haven't seen as recently. As we gather in worship, what announcements do you wish to share? As some of you know, uh, about a year and a half ago, we uh, we asked some people to step forward if they'd be willing to assist our pastors in providing spiritual spiritual care for our members. We were called the Caregiving Ministry of Bridgeway, and we have to confess that we had an oversight and uh, <laughs> neglected to include a couple people on our list and never did assign them a caregiver. So we want to make sure we apologize for that. We want to make sure if any of the rest of you do not know who your caregiver is, we'd like you to come and talk to either me, Ken, or Carol Cron, or as it is, and we'll take care of that. And we're, uh, we have had some changes and uh, in assignments, uh, so we're going to make sure that those changes have, have been brought to your attention for those that it involves. Thank you. So, as you know, last year, we had, Jonah and I had something called Jump for Heart. This year, um, for the, I think, 40th anniversary, um, they changed the name to Kids Heart Challenge. And we're still going to be raising money for it, so if you still want to do the same thing and help um, people with their hearts, you know, for their hearts, with heart disease, you can come and donate money. I forgot my flyer, but John still remembered his. And after church, you can come back to the back table and donate money. We'd like to thank you for raising our total high of 15, uh, 15,000. I mean, $14,515. Just to be clear, they're not hoping to get $14,000 <laughs> from this congregation. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's a school. <laughs> um, I, just a reminder for those of you who were here last week and maybe new information, if you weren't, um, the Bridgeway Pre Preschool is doing their annual sub fundraiser for our scholarship fund, which um, helps support students who would otherwise financially not be able to attend preschool. Um, and this year we've supported three different students has been able to do that as part of the scholarship fund. Um, so today's the last day um, to order subs. There's an easel <laughs> up in the gathering area where you can sign up, and the subs are will be delivered Wednesday, February 6th. Um, anytime after 10.30, you can pick them up, or we'll leave them in the fridge in the kitchen, and you can pick them up at your convenience. And for those who... Oh, go ahead. I just wanted to remind everyone of the continuing magazine collection Bob and I do. Um, I just took made our yearly drives in Eagle Sound. Um, this is for a charity group called Pennsylvania Partnerships Abroad. They collect magazines and use them in English as a second language classes for adults. So there is a very specific list of magazines that they want, it's, but it's like a hundred titles, I think. There's a copy of the list posted on the end of the bookshelf. When you walk into the multi-purpose office, there's a collection box at the other end. So they do want only those specific magazines and only from the current calendar year because they need the English as current as possible to help the people to help the people learn how we talk now instead of even five years ago. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Ann and Bob, for continuing this ministry on behalf of the congregation. For those of you who may not have been here the last two Sundays, um, two Sundays ago, there was a there were <coughs> raindrops available and there are still ones in the back. I invited each person to take two of them 
and to write a word to to carry them through. How is the spirit leading you this year? What word to keep in mind? Uh, there's also a list of sample words. Do not be bound by them, but it was an idea to get juices flowing. The idea is that you write the word on each of two drops, keep one throughout the year, put the other in the basket that is in the back of the sanctuary, and it will be added to the poster that is already present um, for us to hold together as a congregation. Words to inspire, encourage, and challenge us um, throughout this coming year. So if you have not already done so, please take two drops and, and fill them up um, and help us to, to expand what the Spirit is calling us to do and be in this year. A reminder that Bible study will be meeting tomorrow evening in the multi-purpose room, and next Sunday we will be participating in kneeling communion. All are welcome. If there are no other announcements, let us continue in a spirit of worship. Please rise as you are able for the call to worship and continue singing.
today's scripture is from Matthew 5, 1 through 20. The narrative lectionary follows Matthew's gospel account and the Sermon on the Mount, the giving of the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, 1 through 20. In this passage, Jesus also sits down to preach, and his disciples have come near to him. Jesus shares teachings of good news to the poor, the meek, those who grieve and mourn, those who work for peace, those who show mercy. Jesus goes on to say, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness, say, knowing that the disciples will be witnesses to Jesus and will suffer Jesus ends and, and will suffer. Jesus ends this section emphasizing that his work is not to abolish the law or the prophets, but to fulfill it. Jesus' teaching isn't to end the law, but to encourage the disciples to live it out. The first 16 voices will be reading responsively. You can find it in the back of your bulletin on page 834. Sorry, find it in the hymnal, page 834. <laughs> we will all read the italics. The congregation will read the bold, and I will read the plain print. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountains. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world, a city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the, in the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works, and give glory to your Father in heaven. Thank you. 
children are invited to come and join me. anyone ever given you two things and kind of which do you like better? Which do you like? Well, if you're willing, I'd like you to be my taste testers today. So, so I'd like you to take a very small sip of these, if you're willing. <laughs> <laughs> It helps us to see, it 
helps us to find our way. Sometimes, sometimes light can be overpowering. The third verse, you are a seed of the word. You see the seeds? How are we seeds of the word? We continue to grow. Yeah, and what, what can seeds become? It can become trees, what else can they become? Plants, what else can they become? Fruit, that's a seed in itself. We don't have any this day, but we usually have something on the table there. What do we usually have there? A little memory game. People sign up for it, they're usually there. Any ideas? <laughs> Any ideas out there? Flowers. <laughs> flowers. <laughs> so seeds can also grow into flowers. So some it's a kind of plant. Some, some can grow. We usually don't have corn on the table. That may be a good idea. So sometimes seeds grow into things that can can give us can sustain our bodies. Sometimes they are things that just remind us of beauty. God calls us to be salt, to add flavor, to use what we have in our lives to make a difference, to be noticeable, even if they can't see any difference on the outside. God calls us to be light, to share who we are so that others can find their way. And God calls us to be seeds, to grow and to become what God calls us to be. So even though we're not literally any of those things. We do all those things as we try to live and walk in the footsteps of Jesus. So we join me in a prayer. God, you call us to be who you've made us to be. Help us to be salt. Help us to be light. Help us to be seeds. Help us as we grow in our understanding of who you are to share your love with others so that they might know you too. In Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me. You may return to your seats. <coughs> <coughs> of the New Testament of the Bible in your cues. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Do not think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. I've come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. If you can just give me a moment. Um, when I came in to, to worship this morning, um, someone saw the, the emoticons or emojis and said they look like Facebook, which, which they do, they're meant to, um, and said that, uh, joked about checking Facebook, and it reminded me that I haven't had a chance to check my Facebook this morning, so um, I know it's not the most professional, but if you can just give me a moment, I, I, I do try to check it, um, especially before worship, and so... Um, so what are people posting? Today has been a really hard day. For the past few years, I've tried to ignore this day because I didn't want to express any emotion I've had. Only today I've decided it was time to because after an accident, I've changed my mindset. It never dawned on me that a person should live their life the way they want to and to the absolute fullest. Like, 
I can remember every moment from this day one year ago. This past year, I felt sad and lonely and confused and scared and angry and so many more emotions that they rolled together into all grief. The worst year of my life. I miss my dad with my whole forever broken heart. Ooh. Like. Be gentle with yourself. You're doing the best you can. Like. In 2018, 445 men, women, and children were identified as homeless in Harrisburg. Of these numbers, 410 stayed in overnight shelters or other temporary housing. The other 35 slept in vehicles, abandoned buildings, or on the streets. Like. In 2012, a gunman killed six worshipers at a sick temple in Wisconsin before taking his own life. Searching for a way to understand forgiveness, he met with a former white supremacist. Together, they, spur they formed the group Serve to Unite, and in 2018, they co-wrote a book entitled The Gift of Our Wounds. They formed an unlikely friendship that has allowed each to process the pain of their past. Like, a 94-year-old great-grandmother shows up for work at 6 a.m., six mornings a week, to make bread. She doesn't do it for the money, though, but because she says it keeps her youthful. She tried to retire, and she hated it. She loves the feeling of a day's work, and she finds that she's happiest when she's active. She encourages her peers and those who are younger than she is to volunteer for at least two hours a week. Like, urgent call for reservists and interns. Due to last year's denials at the border, Christian peacemaker teams in Palestine is at risk. We call on the CPT community for immediate action so that we may continue to be present with our partners in Hebron. Like, a letter dated March 27th, 1968, this is obviously a repost, in response to an invitation to speak at the annual Brethren Service Dinner in June of that year. First, let me say how deeply grateful I am to you for extending this invitation. I would certainly want to share this dinner meeting with you. Unfortunately, however, because of our Washington Poor People's Campaign, I find that it might be risky to accept any engagements for June. Please know that I regret this very much. It is my hope that I will have an opportunity to serve you sometimes in the future. Sincerely, Martin Luther King, Jr. Wow. March 27th, 1968. That was like a week before he was assassinated. Like. Following Jesus is a vocation to share the fate of God for the life of the world. To allow what God, for some reason, allows and uses and to suffer ever so slightly what God suffers eternally. Those who agree to carry and love what God loves, both the good and the bad, and to pay the price for its reconciliation within themselves. These are the followers of Christ. Like. So hopefully you realize that these Facebook status checks were intentional, specifically chosen. If you were paying particular attention, and, and if my examples were clear enough, you might have noticed that every one <coughs> of those status updates <coughs> corresponded to one of the Beatitudes that we read earlier. I named all of these actual posts, although edited, 
knowing that although biblical realities sometimes seem far removed from our lives, after all, not many of us have experience in tending sheep or putting wine into wineskins. Most of the opening words of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount are painfully, obviously, relevant in our lives. We know about uncertainty and mourning. We know about realities of hunger and injustice, even if we haven't directly experienced them in dramatic fashion. We pray for peace and see how innocent people often suffer the most in power plays between world leaders. And although the exact circumstances may be different, Jesus' words about blessings and troubles connect with the things that we feel and experience and understand. Maybe it was because we identify with the conditions Jesus names that we could be so puzzled about the second part of each, be of each beatitude and its connection of blessing with anything that feel, with things that feel anything but blessed. For most of Facebook's existence, the only quick response to a post was like, and that only came five years into its existence. But maybe recognizing that having one quick response to anything that people post feels inadequate. In 2016, they rolled out these additional five, so we now, for those who use Facebook, have like or love or ha ha or wow or sad or angry. And if all of our experiences could be reduced to one of these six responses, life would be simple. But even so, for those who use the social <clears throat> media platform, having these options, in addition to what we might write in response, makes it seem weird when you hear something sad or tragic and people just do like. That may be what Jesus' listeners were feeling as he was talking about these beatitudes and called those who were suffering blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, those who mourn, those who are hungry, those who are persecuted. Some other translations even go on to say, happy are those who experience these. And in one translation, godlike in their happiness. None of these are things that most of us would call sources of happiness. To call them happy is as shocking as those who press like for tragic situations. Other than the possible exceptions of those who show mercy, those who are pure in heart, those who are peacemakers. No one would claim these as conditions that they would like to have as their reality. Those who heard Jesus would have felt the same sense of confusion we hear today. But even more, those who heard them would recognize that most of what is included in the Beatitudes would actually be causes of shame. For example, although life could be filled with hardship, open, loud, very public grieving was to be avoided at all costs. Meekness was not about being shy. It was about being powerless, having to depend on others for basic needs. It's true of a number of them. Most of those qualities are no easier for us today. Take merciful, for example. 
It's good to be merciful. Most of us would recognize that as a value or a virtue. But if you think about it, we only have reason to show mercy if someone has wronged us or someone owes us something if someone is indebted to us. That's the only time we would have to show mercy. We might appreciate being merciful or others being merciful to us, but none of us wants to be in a position of having to show mercy or seeking mercy. It may be some consolation to know that in the midst of troubles, like the ones that Jesus names. God is with us. But who wants to be persecuted? The Common English Bible gives this section a heading, Happy People. Happy has very little to do with their conditions. Inheriting the earth. Being made full. Being called children of God are all good things. But they're all put into the future. A promise to be made good at some time. You will be called children of God. You will receive the kingdom. You will be filled. You will be comforted. The only exception in the Beatitudes to this, the only one that takes place in the present time, is for those who are harassed or persecuted. It says, the kingdom of heaven is yours. Not will be, but here and now. Maybe that's meant to give a hint of the reality of following Jesus. Before he began to talk about taking up a cross and following him, he gave a hint about the kind of reign of God he was initiating. It wouldn't be populated by the wealthy and the powerful, the ones who had the most knowledge, or even necessarily by those who kept the law most perfectly. Instead, it's characterized by those who treat others with kindness, by those who live peaceably, by those who are in touch with the fullness of life, both what's beautiful and what's painful. The present circumstances may not always be pleasing, but just as knowing that God is with us and that others are as well makes a difference, there is a promise that the way things are now is not how they always will be. That there is a bigger vision that we have yet to fully grasp. It may not make us happy exactly in the meantime, but perhaps brings us a little bit closer to that feeling of being blessed and able to feel joy. The reign of God is about justice for those who are persecuted and welcome for those who are ignored. It doesn't withhold food from those who are hungry and tells those who repeatedly do what's right and are never noticed that they are not forgotten. This blessing doesn't take away the pains of life, but perhaps it gives enough to keep hope alive. Not so different, perhaps, from the response of the some 800,000 federal employees who were facing a second missed paycheck and found out on Friday that the government shutdown has been postponed a three-week reprieve, that coming relief doesn't make anything or everything better in and of itself, but it keeps hope alive. And sometimes that's as close as we get to happiness. It is to those who were and are aware of their need for extravagant hope that Jesus calls upon to be bearers of salt and light. In our time and place, we have such an abundance of artificial light, light and seasoning that we sometimes forget how basic these things are to life. 
In the first century, the only lights available were the sun, or moon, and lamps that could be lit. Salt was not only about flavor, but about preserving food. Today, we turn on the light switch. We put food in the refrigerator or freezer. But it doesn't take more than a few hours of a power outage to make us appreciate what we so often take for granted. When we use the light and the flavor of God's gifts within us, we become more aware of our blessings. And we have the opportunity to make others' lives a bit easier, and maybe even a bit happier. Richard Rohr said it well in a recent meditation about those who seek to follow Christ in good and challenging times. And he says of these followers, they are the leaven, the salt, the remnant, the mustard seed that God uses to transform the world. It doesn't mean that you're going to heaven and others are not. Rather, it means you have already entered heaven and thus can see things in a transcendent, whole, and healing way now. That was a continuation of one of the Facebook posts I read earlier, shared by a friend who had found power in his credit <coughs> on his birthday. At the very least, that's worth a few likes. We are reminded and challenged to do more than clicking on an emoticon or emoji to express how we feel. It can be a start, especially with options, but responding with our own words and indeed with our own actions, reaching out to people in a direct and personal way means so much more than a simple click. Glimpsing a little bit of what God's reign is like, we make it visible in our actions and in our responses to the people and circumstances around us. Jesus came, sharing a new way, but not throwing out what had come before. He remained faithful to the Jewish teachings he had received as a child. He wasn't trying to set up a new religion in his name, but he reminded people of the faith and connection with God that was supposed to be present in the law and was so often lost. He never said, ignore what is difficult or the parts that you don't like, but observe all of it through the lens of love. That means our actions may not always match the words of scripture literally 100%, but if we are striving to be faithful, they match the spirit of the law in which they are written. And they pass the test of loving God and loving neighbor. Jesus never quoted scripture to people who were hurting without continuing the dialogue or addressing the specific needs that they were facing. Even when he met resistance to what he was saying and doing. The reality is, if we choose when we choose to walk in the footsteps of Christ, not everyone will be happy with what we are saying or doing. Not everyone will be happy that we choose to live in Christ's path. There are times when calling out injustice will get more angry faces than likes. But our primary motivation is not the popularity of Facebook or any social media. It's instead about pleasing God. And so instead of wondering on a computer screen distant apart from others or even in our daily interactions, if what we say is pleasing to others, instead of wondering if everyone is happy with us, our primary concern is about caring for how we encounter others with the love of Christ. This is where we find our peace and our blessing. It's what we like to experience, and even more what we need.
lives of justice, love, and truth. We have been blessed to be a blessing. Let us generously offer all that we are and all that we have to further this beloved community of love, justice, truth, and blessing.
it's not difficult to find sources of struggle and sorrow. A quick check on Facebook. Looking at the people around us, listening to stories tell us that not all is right with the world. We hear stories of mourning, of injustice, of hunger and thirst, of hopelessness, of despair, of waiting and wondering. Into all of these stories, into each of these lives, we seek your guidance, your healing touch, your comfort, and your peace. Use us as agents of your healing ministry. Give us words to speak when necessary. Give us hearts that long to respond to the needs around us. Remind us of our call to serve one another in love. And in the midst of serving, as we were reminded in the offering today, let others be willing to step up when someone needs to give us a hug or we need to give a hug in return. Thank you for lessons that we learn from children. Thank you for lessons that we try to teach our children. In all that we do, help us to find our source of hope and strength and comfort in you so that we may be salt and light for others in your name. And strength to live your lives trusting God to lead you.